she should get one. And just for context for everyone that doesn't know, Arco Whip and Teddy are going to be having a debate for the second mock debate tournament, and Teddy is going to be defending that it is not immoral to lie to kids that Santa exists, and Arco is going to be taking the position that it is immoral. Yeah, maybe I should go first then, just so because it sounds like I'm making the positive claim and she's negating it. All right, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it either one, but yep. All right, I'll go first. You might think that Santa Claus is an innocuous story that we tell our children. It's a fantasy. It's a myth. It has no moral bearing at all, just like Harry Potter, right? I'm with you there. I don't think... Narratives or myths are inherently immoral, and I don't think that something like deception is at play in something like a myth or a narrative. What I do think is immoral is what the meaning of this story is and how it impacts our children and our society. So I don't know if you all are familiar with this, but there's a cognitive bias that psychologists have been studying called the just world hypothesis. The just world hypothesis um, is a phenomena that we observe where people tend to think that the world is just, that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. And whenever you're in a world where bad things happen to you, even though you think you are good, you're faced with a dilemma. Do you reappraise how you view the world or do you attack yourself to say that you are not a good person? And there are many strategies that people use between those two. You can rationalize it and say, well, the world is not just, and then that changes how you view the world. Or you could say, I am just a bad person. The story of Santa Claus imparts this just world hypothesis on children, and it does so with a material means. You are naughty or nice, and if you are good, you get presents. The sake of being good is to get presents. You get material rewards for being good. You have a just world being taught to you based on this myth. And at Christmas time, you're given presents. And let's imagine that you're from a low socioeconomic background. You're not able to get all of these presents. And this innocuous child who had no choice in the matter is now sitting there facing this dilemma of the world is not just, I'm a bad person because I didn't get these toys. Santa thought I was a bad person. And then they go to school and they're faced with that same thing when they compare to these other students who had families with wealth and got all the presents and they see those people are good and I am bad and it becomes an attack on a child's well-being and this follows them throughout their life this notion of a just world and their well-being and appraising their well-being based on the material conditions in the world around them and that's something that we are imparting on children when we teach them about Santa Claus when we teach them that they have to be good in order to get presents and then when they don't get the presents, that they then start to think they're bad. That's the first way. We harm our children psychologically when we do that. We harm their well-being. That is immoral. The second way is the story of Santa Claus is the epitome of capitalist patriarchy. Santa Claus is an old, fat, white guy who says who's good and bad and then gives out presents to who's good and doesn't give them to who's bad. He gives them coal. It's an arbiter that represents something like the dynamics in our society, in our capitalist society, where you have wealthy people deciding who gets the material goods and why. We're teaching our children that the world is just, they get material goods based on their actions, and we're teaching them that the arbiter of their actions are these wealthy people at the top who are deciding if you're good or bad, and you have to either accept that and reject your own self as being good or bad, and live in the world, or you have to accept that the world is unjust and that's just a fact. That's something immoral on a socio sociological level and on a psychological level for the children. I rest my case. Okay. Um, I have come here today to argue to a room full of skeptics, philosophers, and critical thinkers that telling your child that Santa Claus is real while being certain, or at least fairly certain, that he is not, 
And I'm talking about the fat man in a red coat, not St. Saint Nicholas of Myra. I realize this will be a difficult task. But having once believed that telling your child that Santa Claus is real is immoral, I can say with confidence today that there's good reason to believe that it is not immoral, at least when done in the right way. It is normal for kids to have magical thinking, to live in a fantasy world. I'm sorry, it's normal and healthy for kids to have magical thinking, to live in a fantasy world, and to participate in elaborate worlds of make-believe. There is no reason to expect them to behave or think like a grown-up from a young age. At least not till about seven or eight when the uh, development of reasoning comes in. Child behavioral experts and psychologists tend to agree with this on the whole. And when um, and they have shown formally or have claimed they believe from their own experience in their field that the Santa Claus myth, one, is not traumatizing to children, and two, may even slightly raise their sense of empathy and charitability. I have some links to share regarding this. Um, I posted them in the debate chat. These are not religious websites or sites affiliated with the right wing, um, and all of them reference at least one expert. The first two are studies. One of them um, is the full study. The other is just an abstract. I want to be clear that I'm not arguing in favor of Santa Claus as a way to modify children's behaviors, to threaten them, to reward them for being good, or especially not to punish them for being bad. But rather, is that is a tradition that is enjoyable for parents and children alike. And when done in a festive way with the true spirit of giving, with charitable and thoughtful gifts, one can say um, with evidence that it is not harmful to the child and possibly beneficial. That is why I do not think it's immoral. Nice. I think we agree on a lot of things. We agree that children can have magical thinking and that is beneficial to them. We agree that these stories we tell our children can teach them things like compassion and empathy especially stories that emphasize things like charity. However, the myth of Santa Claus is not a myth of charity. It's about a man saying you're good or bad, and you get material goods for the good or bad. We're not talking about St. Nick. We agree there. We're talking about the red man in the suit who flies around and comes and brings presents to someone who's good or bad. So even though there might be a good way to talk about a myth or a fantasy, the intrinsic aspect of Santa Claus does impart this feeling of a just world into the child. And that just world is causing this psychological harm. If you're teaching your child that you get material goods because they are good or bad, they're going to have a cognitive appraisal about the world and their actions based on the material consequences that come to them. So when they're given coal or they're not given their Batmobile that they wanted, which was ha what happened to me when I was a young child, it forms a type of traumatic memory for them. Their well-being um, is, in, is in contention there. Yeah, I'm going to challenge you on this because I don't think that's the experience of most children. At least I don't think I have any kind of data on this. I'm just going off of my experience. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, I spent part of my childhood and poverty, part of it in the middle class. And then later on in my teen years, I was more like upper middle class. So right. I'm not extremely, I'm not I extremely experienced with poverty as being a child, but I do have some experience. And um, I can tell you that like myself and my friends um, in the really poor neighborhood that I was in when I was a small child, uh, typically we were not like some, we experienced some kind of disappointment, but none of mm -hmm. us were made to feel like it was because we were bad or because it was our fault. Like, I don't think most parents, um, actually use Santa Claus to threaten their children. I mean, some do, but oh, let's yeah. face it, those I'm guys not are saying they're using Santa Claus to threaten their children, but I'm saying right, that no. a child hears the story. And then they appraise the world in a just world hypothesis. Um, and we have evidence of, of people doing that. It's a very common phenomenon that we see 
where people view the world as a just world or not. What kind of evidence specifically? Yeah, there's this psychologist named Lerner, and Lerner did some studies on these. He's the person who developed the theory, and uh, we see it pop up. I can try and find the study for you if you want. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, um, I'll just I'll link the Wikipedia for now, so you can just at least get an overview. But yeah, it's, so it's, just, it's 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 an accepted cognitive bias in the psychological field. It's not I'm not like just making up something out of nowhere. This is something that we we have observed, and it is um, it is a, it is a very uh, oh yeah no I'm a, I'm a uh, familiar with just world hypothesis, and I do think it's real. Um, what I'm doubting here is the strength of linking it to Santa Claus. Because what I'm hearing from you is the story of like, you know, there's that song, um, you better watch out, you better be mm-hmm. good because Santa yeah. Claus is coming to town, that one. Well, yeah. I mean, that's really the only myth that I can think of, or maybe some older movies, right? Where like, it's strongly driven home that, you know, if you're not a good kid, you won't be rewarded. And I remember having some, fear as a child that I wouldn't get Mm -hmm. any Christmas presents, but, um, but I don't think that that is typically the experience for most children. And I don't think that's typically the message given in the mythos anymore. I think, wait, what do you think the message of the mythos is of Santa? Uh, I think the more common one that we see from movies that children watch for Christmas now, like the, um, the, uh, polar, express and things like that the message is basically like if is uh, santa in the polar everybody express? gets uh i think it's implied yeah but well, um, that's not the same as being the santa myth if it, an implication of santa is not the same as representing the santa myth yeah but i so i don't think that uh most children are given that idea or if they are given that idea i think they find out pretty fast that okay every year i get to have presence so like i'm more mm-hmm. or less uh i'm more or less a good kid and i don't think there's anything wrong with feeling like you're a good kid um if you're be uh, before the age of reason right about seven or eight when you start having to really take accountability for yourself and the things that you do um where we would want to see inculcating like some kind of behavioral expectation Generally, kids have found out by then that there's no Santa Claus. So I don't think well, there's any any harm from I, I agree children with you. feeling like they're good people. I There's nothing wrong with a child feeling like they're a good person. In fact, I want a child to feel like they're a good person, and I want them to think about their actions in terms of it being good or bad. What I think is wrong is this notion that you are a good person in order to get gifts. Your good acts are rewarded by something like a gift. What it's doing is it's teaching the child to do good for the sake of material acquisition. That is what I think is immoral. Not that they think they are good. That I agree with. I think it is important that a child views their actions as good and tries to do good in the world. And I think stories can do that. But the Santa Claus myth is like, it's part of the myth that they get gifts for being good. That is the Santa Claus myth. Unless you're going to say that it's suddenly changing now in the last year. I don't think that that is an argument for how Santa Claus has been immoral in the past. And if you're changing the story of Santa Claus to not have this element of getting gifts because you're good, then I wouldn't say that's the Santa Claus we both were talking about in the beginning, that we would be changing to a different type of Santa Claus. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I do think like that part does trouble me that... um, that under the mythos, children can get the idea that, hey, once you do something good, you'll be rewarded. Just like with the just world hypothesis, I think that's mm-hmm. um, harmful because it's just simply not true. I, I definitely agree with you. But what I'm having um, a hard time seeing still is that the Santa myth definitely um teaches children that because the okay let me think on this for a second because i just had it but it's kind of slipping away the the link to me is that um just because santa claus brings you or okay this is how i think the link is weak all right 
Sorry, I had to get my thoughts together. <laughs> I think the link is weak between Just World Hypothesis and the Santa Claus myth because um, it doesn't follow from that if I'm a good person or if I try to be good, Santa will know and will bring me gifts. Um, it doesn't necessarily That's follow that, hey, wait, but I know, but it doesn't follow from that that um, no matter what I do in life, I will be rewarded for being good. Well, I didn't say no matter what you do in life. I said that the myth imparts that feeling of good being rewarded. It imparts the feeling of the just world. And so the question is, where do children get this notion of a just world? Children get their notions of the world from their parents, from what the parents teach them and show them. Santa Claus is one of those mm -hmm. tools to show them about the just world. You could make the same criticism for something like a religion that teaches karma, that it's, your actions are rewarded with karma. And I would say that that is equally immoral. But in this debate, we're talking about this particular story. So we can talk about other elements that lead to the just cause, but I, the, just, the just world hypothesis. But I think the children are learning the stories from their parents, and those stories are informing the worldview of the children. That is the yeah. link between Santa Claus and the Just World Hypothesis. I think that it takes all of these things together. I don't think any one thing um, is the culprit. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, I think a responsible parent um, would teach that their children, that, um, that the Santa Claus myth is not exactly... Uh, not exactly correct, but just going back for a second. Well, hold on. Hold I, on. Think that I, wanna, I have to interject there. You said they would teach this, the kid the Santa Claus myth is not correct, which would not be the same as teaching them the myth. I want to be clear. Teaching your child that Santa is real is not to tell them that Santa is incorrect. I just want to be clear on that point. All right. But like, okay, you can participate in the Santa Claus tradition without... Mm -hmm participating in the Santa Claus myth. Like you could still have everything else about it the same, right? You could um, tell them that there's a man that gives presents to children all over the world. Um, you can still tell them that, uh, that he comes on Christmas Eve. You can tell them about St. Nicholas and the, and the origins there. Um, you can tell them about the, at, about, Santa Claus's workshop and things like that without uh, telling them that, yeah, you have to be a good person to get these presents or without telling them that, um, why is Santa you know, giving everybody, them presents? Uh, because Santa Claus is a charitable guy that wants to bring joy to the children around. Why the does world. Santa give pre more presents to one kid versus the other? Yeah, that's a trickier one. I think if my child were smart enough to be asking that question, then I would tell them that Santa Claus is not real. Like once right. they and at that point that you're not lying to them about Santa Claus anymore. Right. Well, once they level, once they reach that level of reasoning, I think they've exited that um, that fantasy stage that is talked mm -hmm. about in the articles that I shared earlier. The fantasy yeah, but stage where where it's actually healthy to participate with them in a, in an imaginative world where. Sure. But that's not what the proposition is about. The proposition is about lying to the child, which is a deception that the child faces, meaning that they're accepting it as being real. So if you're talking about, they're able to rationalize it as being fake, it's no longer a lie because the child is in on the game. So that doesn't apply to us lying to our children. Yeah, but you can, <laughs> but what I'm saying is you can lie to them to the point that they start asking the real questions and not mm -hmm. have any like harm come from it. Um, if, if they're at, but if they're asking you like, Hey, why did Tommy down the street get, um, like a little, uh, a little fidget spinner from the dollar store and I got, um, uh, like a full set of Hot Wheels, um, that was really awesome. Like, why would Santa do that to Tommy? He's a nice kid. Mm -hmm. Then they're old enough, like where you're going to say, well, you know, then you would have a heart to heart with them. But if they're not, yeah. if they're still in this magical world where like rationalizing about things doesn't matter, they're not thinking at that rational level. Mm -hmm. Then I don't uh, like, I think that I've shown um, with my links that um, it's at least the opinion of a lot of 
child behaviorists that there's no issue with that. With the, with the young child who can't rationalize, uh-huh. they're not able to articulate the question to you about the worldview being wrong. They don't necessarily realize it's something they can do. So they're running appraisals about their actions in the world based on what they learned. I think so you're assuming that, that you're, when you're lying to your child about that, you're encouraging that behavior for them to self-deprecate about their own goodness. And furthermore, I want to go back to a point you made earlier where you said that there, all of this, all of, it takes many, many stories. And I agree with you. Now, if we take that idea that it takes many, many stories and we talk about it in terms of racism, we can have certain stories that teach racism to children. And you could say that the racism is a fantasy or something, and there's no harm in the fantasy. But then the racism in one story is acceptable, but the racism is in another story isn't acceptable. Then there's a sort of special pleading that goes on. So when we have this collection of stories that imbue racism, the child gets a race bias in their psychology. When you have a collection of stories that are telling them just world and measuring the goodness of their actions and their psychology on the material consequences in the world, you're imparting something to them. So even though this tiny little lie doesn't, it's not a big deal, and it does take this other stuff, there is that part that is still putting it in them. And that is immoral to teach them about that in the same way that it would be immoral to teach them about even the tiniest amount of race bias. Yeah, but I don't think you can compare. Again, I think we're dealing with a weak analogy. You're saying you're talking about a story um, about racism, about a race bias, where the race bias is already, you know, it's self-description. It's already baked into the story. We already know this about the story. But Mm -hmm. I'm still not convinced that the Santa Claus myth necessarily teaches just world theory because you can't reasonably conclude from it that just because one guy cares about my how good I am or whatever and will um, bring me gifts at the end of the year if he thinks I gave it my all, then um, that doesn't follow that like that the whole world works that way. And it would be silly to think that would be a very unreasonable well, thought. When you're a kid and you're building a worldview about your actions and your parents are reinforcing throughout the year, don't do that or you won't get, or Santa won't give you presents. That's reinforcing this notion that your actions are about this. It's not to say that Santa has power over all the good and bad in the world. I'm not making that claim. I'm making the claim that they're judging, they're psychologically judging their own actions, good and bad, based on these material consequences that come from Santa. They're not making the assumption that all of the events in the world, like hurricanes, are then relevant to Santa Claus. It's just about the character of their own actions and what happens to them from them, which is a distinction between the world having chaotic features that might seem unjust. So I think that, you know, if you have a nice, like a good boss that is actually... I mean, I feel kind of weird saying that, but like, you know, a boss that is as good as a boss can possibly be that actually recognizes your work and Mm -hmm. makes you want and like makes you want to work harder because you know that he's actually going to recognize you, give you a raise, give you a promotion, um, give you a bonus at the end of the year, like all sorts of things that people used to be able to like ostensibly rely on, or like, at least that's the myth. Like, but anyway, let's just say you really lucked out and you have this pr- pretty nice boss that actually recognizes your work. Would it then be reasonable to think that everybody else is in that situation where that if they work really hard, then their boss is going to give them a raise or a promotion or something like that? Because I think that you would be making the same error in thinking that. Um, I think it's immoral in the capitalist system for a boss to do something like that, too, for there to be this employer-employee situation. I find that immoral as well. And I think that the Santa Claus story reinforces the immorality of capitalism. uh, Yeah, sure. I agree with that. But we're... Oh, okay, you agree that capitalism is immoral, so then apply the same logic to why capitalism is immoral there to the story of Santa Claus. And then we're on the same page. Hmm... No, because again, I like I think feel like you're trying to tie everything together, 
and you're not, you don't like have a very good knot tying system. Like it's just not, there's no strength in these connections. Well, you're describing it as being weak, but can you tell me precisely in what way it's weak? Yeah. As I've said, um, it just, it, so if, like I said with the boss example, just because your actions in that situation are being rewarded doesn't mean the actions of everybody in that situation are being rewarded. And um, Wait, even if- th- Hold on. I thought you were saying that, isn't it fair to assume that the boss is rewarding everyone based on their their actions in the workplace? No, I said, would it be reasonable? And my my inclination would be to say no. Like it's not reasonable to think that um, everybody's boss is rewarding them for hard work. Why not? Be- just because you lucked out and you have a nice boss doesn't mean everybody does. And if you've lived on the I- earth for more than ten years, you would you would know that. I think the assumption I think the assumption that's being made is that the boss is the arbiter of who's going to get raises or rewards for the work that they do. Not that everyone is going to be rewarded by the same boss. And what breaks the symmetry between those two analogies is Santa is the only boss. So we all know what kind of boss we have. And the boss's rules are clear. If you're naughty, you get coal. If you're nice, you get toys. Um, Yeah. And you keep saying that and you keep kind of painting it to be like parents all year long are being like, don't do that or else Santa's not going to give you presents. I don't think that's how it actually works for most children. And because for most children, their parents are in the place of Santa Claus, right? And they can see, Mm -hmm. you know, if their parent, if their child, even if their child is misbehaving a lot, they're still going to tend to love that child and be charitable toward that child and try to give them something, even if it's not what they want, or even if it's like a a dollar store. I'm talking about it from the perspective of the child's psychology. They don't know that their parents are Santa Claus. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a lie. They don't know that their parent is going to reward them for being good anyways. That's not in part of the worldview that the child is constructing. So even though the parents would still be doing something good, and that's a nice thing in the world, that isn't a criticism to my point about the just world hypothesis being reinforced through Santa Claus and being reinforced in an unhealthy way. Okay. Um, Could you repeat that last part? Because I I kind of got off track a little bit. Um, I was saying, uh, you were saying that the parents know their child even though they're doing bad, the parents will still reward them with good things, even though they might have acted up. And I was mm-hmm. saying that isn't relevant to the child's point of view. They don't know that their parents are Santa. They don't know that they're going to be getting presents, even though they were bad. What they're told is that they will be rewarded for being good by Santa, or they won't be rewarded for being good. Or they'll, mm. be, they'll be given punished like coal for being bad. From their point of view, their, their parent, what their parents are doing is not relevant yeah see i mean i don't remember ever thinking that uh, or teaching that i mean i would just say you were lucky because i remember thinking that all right well yeah in that case like i do think that's messed up but i mean Mm -hmm. i i again i don't think that most parents are doing that at least not the ones that i know so i would say that those parents aren't aren't lying about santa in that case Wait, when, then who are they lying about? Like when I'm when someone is lying about Santa, I take that to mean that they're telling their child that Santa will give them gifts if they're good or they'll give them coal if they're bad. And that Santa is this magical person who flies around and gives everyone gifts and he rewards all the good children for gifts. And those who, who are bad get coal and he might reward them for, you know, just being a human. He might, out of the charity of his heart, give something good. And in that way, we should be charitable. But still, the foundation of it is that there's this magic being out there who is visiting all the houses, rewarding people for doing good and not rewarding them when they're bad. Yeah, I don't accept that characterization because I think that you can have Santa Claus. A lot of people do have Santa Claus without the notion that they have to be good in order to get a present. 
Right, like for so a lot of children. So what would that Santa Claus look like? That everything except for the moral rule, everything except for the conditional. Like there's no condition to Santa's charity for some people. And I think that that's the right way to do Santa Claus. And that's the way that sure. I've seen Santa Claus done most of the time. I would, I, I think that's a prescriptive claim about how we ought to teach Santa, but I don't think that's the way Santa is taught. All right. Well, I don't think there's any like real data on that, but, um, mm-hmm. I guess we'll just have yeah, to. Yeah, no one's really like on gone through and, and looked at the media about it. Like, how is Santa portrayed? Yeah, I guess we're just going to like have to agree to disagree because it's been my my experience, you know, when mm-hmm. I see my friends doing Santa Claus for their kids and things like that, um, is that it actually has changed a lot since we were children and that usually parents are um, doing Santa Claus in, in a way that they use Santa Claus to teach children about um, like an almost unconditional charity. And once their kids are old enough to be asking real questions about it, they typically let that go pretty quickly. Right, but the asking real questions is after the lying phase because then it wouldn't be a lie anymore. And furthermore, the way that... I don't, the way I don't I've know seen what you Santa mean by change, that. The way I've seen Santa change is that people have just stopped teaching about Santa rather than teaching Santa in a new way. I just... I just have seen people not teach about Santa and just teach about charity in general. You don't need Santa for that charity. But what's, I think, important to the story of Santa is this notion of the giving when you're nice. All right. I I mean, I don't see, like, even if I did accept your just theory thing, Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't see this bear out in the evidence, especially with the first link that I shared where... Okay, um, we can go into the first link then. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to go through the study. Sure. Let's um, do it. Okay. So in the first study, um, Santa is linked to kindness, although children might not like waiting in line to see him at the mall. Children often stop leaving Santa around age seven and this bothers parents more than children just because some children stop believing in Santa does not mean he does not exist. Some people do not believe in evidence-based medicine, yet here we are. Is Santa okay. linked to kindness? Sure. Are children excited to see Santa in the mall? Okay. When do children stop believing? Are children upset when they stop believing? Children had minimal distress transitioning to disbelief. So the, this is looking at the moment of transition. It's not looking about how they feel about their worldview before transitioning. So the study does not attack my point about their view of the just world prior to transitioning. Wait, but don't you think that if this were actually doing damage to children, that they would have some kind of distress or trauma from finding out that he's not real? Like At the I- moment of transition, we both agreed they're more rational. They're at a stage of rationality where they can, they're capable of reappraising the world. They have grown and developed. They've developed these skills. When they are younger, they don't have those skills. So that also grows too. There's not a moment it clicks on, but it grows gradually. So when they're at a moment where they're distressed about Santa and they start to grow and transition and question these beliefs, the work for getting rid of that distress is already done in the child's psychology. So even though we have evidence at the moment that the distress is gone, that evidence at the moment is not evidence that the distress was lacking prior to that moment. Okay, right. And you think that the distress specifically comes from a fear of being punished if they're not good enough. Is that I what think you're the saying? Dis- I think the distress is the same as people get as adults get even in the just world. Like whenever a person is whenever a person like is driving and they get in a car accident and the passenger in their car died and they had nothing to do with it and they're questioning this moment that happened in their life. It's very traumatic. They're wrestling with this idea of like, did I do something bad? Is the world just unjust? Like there's this huge like worldview reconsideration that's happening. And that's a very complicated version of that. A child can't handle something like that in the same way an adult can. But when we're talking about it in terms of a Santa Claus myth, it's a primitive version of that same sequence of events, that same type of moral trauma that's occurring, that same type of like, am I good? Am I bad? Trying to figure out the world. And when you're teaching that to a child that is young and impressionable, you're leaving things 
in their psychology that'll last them a lifetime. Even though we can't find that like direct mechanistic thing, we can see it boil out in the outcomes of how people view the just world in the future. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier, where the stories add to that feeling. We're not teaching them the proper tools to deal with an unjust world. We're telling them that it's a just world and that these things will come about. You'll get rewards or you won't get rewards based on the just world. We're not giving them the coping skills for that. In fact, we're enforcing the wrong types of behaviors to deal with an unjust world. And that's immoral. All right. We only have five minutes left and I've been letting you go on for a while. Can I talk for a minute? Okay. So, I mean, you, so you keep saying that we're teaching, this is the first thing I have to address. We, you keep saying that we're teaching children that um, they live in a just world by teaching them the Santa Claus myth. For one, I think you're relying on a version of Santa Claus that, though historically is accurate, is not necessary and I think is way less popular today. Um, For another thing, um, again, I just don't think that even if we thought that everybody was using this kind of like unjust, less friendly version of Santa Claus... um, that it wouldn't necessarily follow that we're teaching children about a like a just world just because in this one case, there's a sense of justice. In fact, it could be relieving for a child that lives in an unjust society to have one instance where for a little while things are just. And um, finally, uh, we're talking about this partition between for most children, seven to eight, they reach the age of re- reason. Um, and that's usually also when they find out that Santa Claus is not real. And you're saying that there's like, that there's some kind of, um, harm that comes before that. I think that that is true for, for parents that are using Santa Claus in a malicious or behaviorally directed way, or perhaps, uh, parents with like very extreme moralistic religious or, uh, political ideals, then yeah, that they'll probably use and abuse Santa Claus um, and make, and actually like hurt their children and make them worry constantly. But I don't think that that is an experience for a child with a responsible, kind parent. And I don't think that the problem is Santa Claus, but rather the parent, because you can still teach children about, um, about generosity and gift giving and just for the sake of it. Um, what using Santa Claus if you want to, um, and it it it, uh, it there's no harm, and in fact, a lot of good can come from indulging and playing along with a pre-rational child's fantasy uh, world and magical thinking. Um, I agree that there's no harm in magical thinking. I agree that we could teach Santa in an ethical way. Where I disagree is what the story of Santa is. And where I disagree is that it's not just when a parent uses the Santa story maliciously. My point is that the Santa story is teaching children certain coping skills. The coping skills that they're given through the Santa story is what's causing the harm. That is what is learned from the story. It doesn't have to just be the Santa story. I would hold that position that any story that teaches a coping skill like the Santa story teaches would be immoral. It just so happens to be the case we're talking about Santa. And those coping skills are the ones that lead to things like self-denial, depression, consequences of the world being unfair, nihilism. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about. And that goes into adulthood. Yeah, no, I think those are more of the product of abusive parents, the same kind of parents that would use Santa Claus to get their their way and control their children. I think abusive parents do tend to have those outcomes. However, I think even the most kind-hearted parent who is teaching that type of coping skill would still be doing a harm. We see this with Christian parents who have the most goodwill possible to just teach their child about how to be good and how to obey God. And they're teaching them about the same kind of just world aspect, that God is the, is the being that's weighing the good and bad that they do. And we see those negative outcomes. There's, there's a new um, 
there's a new type of therapy therapy coming about for people who have religious trauma. And one of those religious traumas is something like the just world hypothesis coming from God. We can see the same type of thing play out in children, whether the parent had good or bad intentions. It doesn't matter to me about the intentions for the immorality. It's immoral for the child to be given that type of coping skill. Arco, I'm assuming you're going first. Oh, sure. I, I I was just speaking, so I wanted to give you space to go if you wanted. You could respond to that point, and then I could give my closing statement if you like. Um. Yeah, I, I just quickly wanted to respond to that point. And that's, that's fine with me if it's cool with Stone. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, um, so I, I don't think that it's fair to compare, um, like, religious teaching with Santa Claus. That was really my only point. Uh, I don't think that there's Mm -hmm. a strong enough connection there because, you know, you're talking about actually building an entire worldview, um, like versus, like I said, just kind of like a one time limited time, magical thinking, fantasy play kind of thing that can actually bring bonding amongst people. But anyway, that's it. I'll I'll let you do your closing statement. now. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, that, that kind of launches me quite nicely into the closing statement. Um, Where Teddy and I agree is on the notion that children can have magical thinking and have play in their magical thinking. And we both agree that we want to encourage children to use these narratives and magical thinking and play to develop a worldview, to ask questions about their world, to explore things. Now, I want to talk about this idea of Santa Claus as that goes with it. Santa Claus is not a story that is telling children to ask questions about the world in play. Santa Claus is a pre-packaged myth that has very clear constraints. We disagree on the clarity of those constraints. Teddy does not think that it is clear based on how I'm viewing it. I leave it to the audience to decide. My view is that Santa Claus's story is about someone who is deciding who is naughty and nice and then giving presents to those who are naughty and nice. And a young child that is not capable of rationality yet, who is still building their worldview, who is getting the skills to build their worldview from their parents, and their parents are the ones who are telling them that they will be rewarded with material goods if they're good, but they will be given coal if they're bad, is going to impart a coping skill to deal with the randomness of the world, the unjustness of the world that is harmful to the child's well-being. And that is immoral, even if the parent has the best intentions. That's my argument. Okay, thank you, Arco. Um, By the way, this was a really good debate. I had a lot of fun. So my closing statements are that um, I agree with with Arco where he says we agree and disagree. And but there are some contentions that he did not cover. For example, he keeps talking about Santa Claus building a worldview just as like a uh, belief in God and Christianity would. And I would argue that Christianity and God and religion in general do build a worldview, whereas Santa Claus is, again, a limited time, limited scope activity of fantasy and magical thinking that is appropriate for a young child who has not yet reached the age of reason. Arco also talked about threatening a child with coal if they're bad and a gift if they're good, which I guess some parents might still too, but I don't think that's a necessary requirement of the Santa Claus mythos or any kind of Santa Claus related activities. And I think that parents who do that are probably not good parents to begin with and are affecting their child with much worse lies and much worse abuse and control methods than just Santa Claus alone. Um, and I also, he, he brought up rationality a few times where um, he kept saying that, oh yeah, by the t- time the child reaches the age of reason and you've exposed the lie, it is no longer a lie. So not, that is when the moral or the immorality stops being immoral because the lie is exposed. But um, again, it's that reason that makes the lie immoral, that working against a child's reasoning to try to trick them to like to the age of 13 or 14, well beyond the age of reason would 
be very immoral. But when they're still in that magical uh, thinking stage, um, it is good and healthy to participate in imaginative experiences. And if they're questioning it and you're still trying to be, build a worldview that is not the one that they are seeing, then yes, that is also immoral. So, but I don't think that's Santa Claus itself. I think that is poor, basically just poor parenting and in a deliberate way to trick the child. It's basically like the difference between a responsible gun owner and a, a non-responsible gun owner. Um, you know, Santa Claus is a activity and in some cases a tool when used wrongly, it can be bad, but when used uh, by a compassionate, kind, and instructive parent, uh, it can be very, very good. And I think that I provided some evidence for that as well. So um, in conclusion, I don't think that Santa, the Santa Claus activity or myth is inherently immoral. And I don't see a problem with parents using it responsibly.